Let's prepare on the soil exploration. So we are going to see soil exploration now. So before that, let us see a topic of significant depth. Okay, so the significant depth means it is the depth up to which the stress increment due to any applied load can produce a significant settlement. Okay, so generally they will be taking 10% of the load intensity as this uh, significant depth. That is when the increase in the vertical stress is 10% of its load intensity. So that is only mentioned as 0.1 Q here. Okay, so generally we will be taking at this load the significant depth occurs. And then the depth of exploration we will be normally doing in the soil is 1.5 to 2 times the width. And the number of boreholes to be made is that is before constructing a building we will be uh, doing a borehole and we will be testing the soil sample no. So if it is a small and less important building means one hole is enough and if it is a large building and very important building, building means we generally go for five boreholes. So in which one should be at the center and other four should be at the corners of that building. And the next borings. So there are different types of boring methods and there are different types of exploration methods so that we will be seeing now. So first uh, the simple method of exploring the soil is that is to taking out the soil is test pits or trial pits. So just by uh, digging the soil we can do the soil sampling everything. So this can be done only for small depths uh, approximately up to 3 meters. So this is possible but when we go beyond this the boring has to be done. So that is only there are different types of borings given here. So the first method of boring is auger boring which is used for soft soils and can be used for shallow foundations. So this is useful when we are constructing highways and all. And the next method is the wash boring. So this method is used for all types of soil. So in wash boring what is done is water is forced under pressure through a hollow drill uh, so that the soil is excavated. Okay, And so this is uh, possible even uh, in all types of soil but except the hard rocks and uh, soils okay so in rocks and all this method cannot be used here and the third method is percussion drilling and if you see out of this five the first two are different and the next three are different that is the next three drilling methods are used uh, in the rocks but the first two methods boring methods no, it cannot be used in the rocks okay so the third method percussion drilling can be used even in the boundary and gravel stratum and the fourth method uh, rotary drilling can be used in sand clay rocks and this can go up to a dia of 50 to 200 mm also and the last one is the core drilling so this method uses a diamond cutting edge and so it uh, drills the rocks even very easily and the next is the soil sample we are taking now. So this is categorized into undisturbed and disturbed soil. So undisturbed soil means it will not lose its shear strength, permeability and compressibility. So if we want to check these characteristics means we should take an undisturbed sample only. And the undisturbed sample can be taken by these methods that is shell by tubes and piston samplers. The second one is the disturbed soil. So disturbed soil means we can do only the index properties test. So by finding the Atterberg limit. So that alone can be done. So this can be done by the split spoon sampler. So this is split. Okay, SP, SP split spoon sampler. And then uh, the next one is the sampling we are doing. No? So with respect to that they have given these values. So first let us see the diagram. So if you see this diagram, so this is your uh, sampler. So this will be your sampling tube and the bottom portion will be your cutting edge. So with respect to this, they have given the dimensions D1, D2, D3 and D4. So now this is your formula for area ratio. It is D2 square minus D1 square by D1 square into 100. And for getting undisturbed sample, it should be less than or equal to 10 percentage. And the inside clearance and outside clearance uh, value is also important. So its formula is D3 minus D1 by D1 into 100. So the range should be 0 0.5 to 3 for undisturbed sample. And outside clearance, it is D2 minus D4 by D4 into 100. And the value is 0 to 2 percentage. And then comes the standard penetration test. 
so here it is generally done in the cohesion less soil only and it gives an idea about the relative density okay so here it is generally termed as spt so what we'll be doing is we'll be applying a hammer over a soil and the number of blows required for 30 cm penetration is taken as the n value here okay so that value is only taken here so here this 30 cm penetration is very important so this is purely depend upon the phi value and c value both of the soil and the weight of the hammer used is generally 65 kg and the height of the fall the hammer is dropped is 75 centimeter here the first 15 centimeter is omitted that is we are doing penetration no so in that the first 15 centimeter penetration is omitted because it may vary in different areas due to the top layer of the soil so they call this value as a seating value after this 30 centimeter only we'll be taking into account and we'll be taking the number of blows required for that 30 centimeter and then we will be applying correction to these values so there are two corrections applied in this spt method the first one is the overburden method so overburden means it is just a overburden pressure which is uh, already present in the soil so if it is having a very high overburden pressure means then the n value will be automatically increasing so that the uh, value error will be happening so to reduce these errors this correction has to be made so n dash so let us take n as the original value we got from the field n dash will be equal to 0 0.77 n log of 1905 by sigma dash so sigma dash is the effective stress and here uh, generally it is taken for greater than 24 kilonewton per meter square okay and the second one is the dilatancy uh, correction so this is used when the soil is silty fine sand is used or uh, some soil will be below the water table no so for that soil if you're using means this dilatancy tendency correction has to be applied so here n dash if you are getting greater than 15 means n double dash that is the corrected value should be 15 plus n dash minus 15 by 2 if it is less than 15 means no need to do any correction here okay so the importance of n value is it is indicated uh, the id that is the relative density and the ucc strength also so it directly indicates these both and if n is high means the angle of shearing resistance of the soil is high the next one is the static cone penetration so this is similar to the standard uh, penetration test only but here a cone like structure is used but this test is a manual test and uh, with manual uh, forcing into the soil we can find the resistance value uh, which we get with the soil okay so it is directly measured with the equipment so that we get the direct value there and the third method is the pressure meter test so here it is used to determine the stress deformation characteristics of the soil and then these two methods are some unique method that is seismic refraction and seismic re reflection okay so these methods are used when means when the subsoil investigation is needed okay so seismic refraction is generally used for subsoil investigation and reflection is used for especially in petroleum explorations okay and uh, this refraction oh, so this is not suitable if the hard layer is above the soft layer that is when a hard stratum is uh, present below the soft stratum because this is purely based on the refraction wave so these waves will be get disturbed with the soft layer itself so that it cannot reach the hard layer or there will be some obstructions there so if such a uh, concept is available in the soil means it is not possible to use this method and then the stabilization of soil okay so the stabilization can be done by various methods the first one is the mechanical method which can be directly used uh, no chemicals is needed and just by doing the mechanical forces we can do that so this is extensively used for roads and the second method is the cement method cement method means we'll be adding cement to the soil so soil plus cement plus water and then compaction and curing also should be done because we are adding cement to it so here five percentage of cement is added if it is a sand layer and if it is a clay means the stabilization has to be given more so that 15 percent of cement is added and then the lime stabilization method so this is specifically used for clay soil and uh, for black cotton soil also uh, you cannot use it, use this for sandy soils so here 
the hydrated lime is used here so the liquid limit decreases and the plastic limit increases and the plastic inten, uh, index of the plasticity index of the soil also decreases here in this lime stabilization method and the fourth method is the chemical stabilization method here chemicals like calcium chloride sodium chloride and sodium silicates are used and the last topic in this lecture is ground improvement techniques so this ground improvement techniques is also uh, one of uh, emerging topic now so the first method uh, given here is electro osmosis so which is used for soft clay soil so these are are very uh, theoretical it is not uh, important to go very deeper into it but just know the method and for what it is used so that you should be knowing okay so the first one is used for soft clay soils and the next method is vibro flotation method so which is used for deep deposits of loose sandy soils so if it is a loose sandy means itself vibration only has to be given and the third method is terra probe so it is similar to vibro flotation only and the fourth is lime pile method which is used in clay soils with very high moisture content and the fifth one is stone column method so just there will be constructing a column like structure with stones to increase the strength of the soil so this is to improve the bearing capacity and also to reduce the settlement in soft clays and then the last method is the geo textile method so here geo polymers will be used in various shape and in various depth so that the stabilization has to be uh, done for the soil to improve its capacity so here this serves as a separation uh, sometimes they'll be using as a separation also that is uh, for prevent the grading of the soil or to prevent uh, uh, the movement of uh, gravel particles of the soil so like that also they will be using this geotextile and for filtration even drainage also and reinforcement also they will be using this geotextiles thank you and keep watching